Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Um, greetings in Jesus' name, all the way from San Francisco. Uh, hopefully, um, all is well with you and your family and just your your circumstance. Um, as we know that uh, God is a uh, on the throne and still our king and doing wonders uh, in our lives, right? Yeah, even though it doesn't feel like it sometimes, God is truly a good God and a gracious God. And, and um, you know, we get to live in his mercies. We, we, we get to be justified and, and righteous because of, of the work that Jesus has done on the cross. And, um, Wow, that should really make us, um, um, you know, uh, joyful people and uh, secure people uh, in our lives. Even though we, you know, we know that things could be feel very insecure because we're lonely, wanting a spouse, or uh, you know, <clears throat> financial situations, or just emotional struggles. You know, we could find ourselves feeling. Um, very insecure but um the truth of the matter is if we feel it or we don't feel it we are secure in god and and he is constantly with us and attentive and moving and touching and doing all kinds of just wonderful things for us um in 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 our lives you know um god is is definitely good he is uh, definitely gracious and, 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 and um, just loving us. And um, I feel just uh, a swell of, of gratitude of, of God and, and, and what he's doing um, just for me personally and just um, also just corporately in, in, in the body uh, of God, of Christ. You know, I, I have been and there at Central Church. I've I've been preaching, um, just really, uh, um, um, just on more of God and desiring more of God. And there's more in God, and God has more for us. And and that we just uh, um, you know um, have to trust God, believe Him. Um, the scripture keeps coming back to my mind um, over the last few weeks. Uh, um, you have not because you ask not. And um, I've really taken that to heart where I'd come to like just in a sense, <clears throat> you know, automatic pilot in the sense that, oh, God, you know what I, I need. Not so much that, but still just like, hey, God, you, you know what I need. You know, I've been asking you for it. And, uh, but, but I felt that, that in, I'm talking of myself where, you know, there was just this element of passion that was missing or desperation for God, desperation for the movement of God, desperation for, for, to see God move or the hands of God. In, in Psalm 42, um, verses 1 through 3, it says this, As the deer pants, or longs, for the water brook, so pants my soul for you, O God. Here, you know, it's a very vivid picture of this deer that is panting, that is thirsty, that is dehydrated, that, that it, it wants to drink water. And here, here uh, the psalmist saying, you know, so my soul pants for you, God. There's this element of, of desperation in the statement. We're like, just like this animal needs to drink water. I, I need you, God. I need you. He goes on to say, the psalmist goes on to say, my soul thirsts for God. For God, for the living God, when shall I come and appear before God? He's saying, listen, I, just like the animal is thirsty, I'm thirsty for God, this living God. And, and, and look at the longing 
in it. He says, when shall I appear before God? God, when are you going to appear to me? When are you going to answer these prayers? When are you going to manifest yourself in my life? When? He's not saying it with uh, disdain or with, you're not answering me or you've abandoned me, God. No, he's, he's longing for it, right? He's longing for it, like, like anticipating the time that God is going to appear, that God's going to move, that God's going to answer his questions or his prayers. Look at what he goes on to say. Uh, verse 3, my tears have been my food day and night while they continually say to, to me, where is your God? So he's not saying this on like some high mountaintop, right? Of, hey, he just had this super spiritual victory. No, he, he's saying, look at, I, I'm in the middle of my uh, sadness. I'm in the middle of my trial, right? Because he, he's saying, my tears are my food. Meaning he's crying. That's, that's what he all he's doing is crying in, in, in his circumstances. But still, he's, I, I'm desperate for you, God. I'm desperate for your move. I'm desperate for you to do something. I'm desperate. Others are saying, where's your God? What are you doing? Why are you praying? Why are you waiting? This isn't going to happen. Your dreams will never come true. You'll never get the job. You'll never get into school. What? Whatever the haters, or yeah, the haters, let's just say that. The haters are saying, where's your God? Sometimes even the hater is my own mind. It says, where's your God? Where's God? Huh? Where is he? But in me now, I've learned that that creates this desperation for the Lord. Desperate for him. Desperate for his move. Desperate, God, you have to speak. God, you have to do, you have to heal this person. You have to do these things. It's this desperation of dying of thirst. Dying of thirst. I want to encourage you. Don't stop. Don't give up. Don't, don't stop believing God. Don't stop trusting him. Even if you've been in a trial for your whole life, even if you've been struggling with emotional issues your whole life, even if you've never gotten over the traumas of your past, I'm telling you, I'm encouraging you, don't give up. Don't give up. Turn that angst, right? Turn that angst, that anxiety, turn, turn that pain, turning that, turn that, 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 the non-stopness of, of negativity in your mind, maybe turn that into desperation for God. Yes, I'm in my tears, but my soul thirsts for the living God. When shall you appear before, before God? When, 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 when are you going to appear God? Right? Right? God challenges us all the time and we can challenge him as well. We can challenge him, challenge him. Look at what the psalmist says later in verses seven and eight of Psalm 42. He says, deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. What's he saying? You know, he, what's he saying? He's talking about being desperate, being thirsty, longing for God, ne needing God. Look at what he says here. He, now he says, deep calls in the deep. Hear this waterfall like engulfs him. He's, he's totally enveloped, right? That's, the waves below have gone over me, meaning he is consumed, consumed in the presence of God. Consumed, right? Deep calls in the deep. Such a small little phrase that it's such a powerful verse to me always because this is how I see it. Deep calls unto deep. God's calling, come, come, come deeper, come in, come, come, come. But sometimes we don't see that. We don't hear that because what? We're consumed by other things. We're consumed by our fears. We're consumed by our insecurities. We're consumed by the 
by anxiety of things that that might happen to us, that the bills won't get paid, uh, that I'm going to break up, uh, that w- whatever it is. We're consumed with other things. But here the psalmist is saying, deep, deep calls unto deep. Come. You thirsty, come. Come. You hungry? You desperate? You're desperate? Come. Come. Come into the presence of God. Come. Come. We always hesitate. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, I wish I could be like that. Oh, I wish to God would touch me like he touches so and so. We 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 come up with all these reasons why we can't be desperate for God. We come up with all these reasons why we can't just plunge into the presence of the Lord, where we can be consumed by Him. I encourage you. I challenge you. Let's put our pride aside. Let's put our arrogance aside. Brother, but I'm not arrogant. Put our arrogance aside. Let's be desperate for Him. Because in the desperation, we see God. In the desperation, we move the hand of God. We move the hand of God. In our desperation, it, 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 it's, 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 it's making God to do something. Be encouraged. God is with us. God is with us and he's for us. And, and if you believe it or not, he, he is our God. He is our King. He is attentive to us. No matter how bad you're hurting right now, no matter how disillusioned you are about the things of God, He's with you. He's with you. If you're in church or if you're not in church, if, if, you're, if you're serving God or you have backslidden, I don't even like that term anymore that you you kind of stopped he loves you he's with you and if you just turn your face to him if you turn your face to him he will he will kiss your face with his love with his grace and with his mercy god bless all of you i pray you have a wonderful weekend and uh, I, i pray to hear your testimonies <laughs> or, or your comments on how God has moved in your life this week. God bless you. Um, in Jesus' name, uh, um, stay safe and, and, uh, and continue to seek his face. God bless you.